Errol, New Hampshire is not a place one ends up by chance. Tucked way up in the White Mountains, it's 24 miles from the Canadian border. Winters are long, and with just 281 residents, well... Everybody knows everybody, and everybody knows everybody's business. Perdita Largesse has lived in Errol for 29 years. She's still considered a newcomer. Her friendship with Ella started with a random call to an auto parts store in Colebrook. She called the store and asked me if I wouldn't mind picking up some dog food for her, and I said absolutely, and we've been friends ever since. Running out of dog food at Ella Logan's house is a full-on crisis. This former runway model has 11, 11 dogs. She rolled into town in 2007 with a crew of 16 dogs. Six of them were puppies. She needed a place to stay and a long nap. The journey from Los Angeles took three and a half weeks. They were good as long as the van was going, but when I had to stop for gas, oh yeah, we were quite the spectacle. <laughs> I got here July 19th at 7.20. <laughs> I'll never forget it, and I think I slept for about two and a half weeks. I mean, I was exhausted. A new face with 16 dogs is bound to stand out in the teeny town of Errol, but Ella's accent makes her downright exotic. Born and raised in Tennessee, Ella was given up for adoption at birth. She lived in a foster home for years before finally getting adopted. My adoptive parents were in their 50s, so when I came to live with them when I was five. At school, uh, the kids would say, your grandparents are here to pick you up. Ella was an only child, but her parents made sure she had animals. They were her friends, she says. Dogs, cats, chickens. It was a happy childhood. She knew she was adopted. From day one, before I even knew what the word meant, they wanted to make sure they told me that, what adopt, that I was adopted because they didn't want kids to be cruel. After high school, Ella modeled New York, Chicago, Cleveland, Ohio. I did runway and I did um, commercial for the papers, like the Sunday papers for Macy's or whatever. Yeah, that was me. <laughs> Good money. A great experience. I had a great backing. I didn't. I don't have any horror stories like some girls might. But animals, not fashion, are Ella's passion. She said farewell to bright lights and runways and moved west. California was calling. Work as a legal assistant helped sustain her passion as an animal advocate and dog rescuer. The last dog I rescued, Cleo. Uh, it was every intention, like it had been. Several dogs over the years I've fostered and found homes for. What it was about this time, I don't know. God had other plans, I guess. She gave birth. She did not want to nurse them after two weeks. I had to hand feed, uh, bottle feed, 10 puppies. I already had six dogs, 10 puppies. This foster child, only child, animal lover, got attached. Couldn't part with any of them. Her condo had a three dog limit. She was more than five times over it. It was time to go, but where? The offer of a free place to stay in Errol, New Hampshire was too good to pass up. <laughs> Ella was appointed as the town clerk and will be on the ballot this year. She's making roots here. Yeah. I'm, a lot of people love Ella. She's got a big heart. She helps whoever calls her, because people call her and Facebook her. She also works at the town library a couple of doors down. And when it's not busy, she's a social media warrior, using Facebook to spread the word about dogs who need homes. So I've started putting in the shelter sense and then post it on Facebook. And then I'll put an update, and they'll see that this update was January, so this dog is probably still there. Her focus? Kill shelters, overcrowded shelters, literal underdogs. These are abused dogs, neglected dogs, dogs with one eye, dogs with need surgery, dogs that heartworm positive, dogs that's um, aggressive, but they're not aggressive. They're just stressed and they need another chance. You know, I, I know that because that's the ones I take in. Ella's mission to find families for dogs pivoted to finding her own family after her adopted father died three years ago. I did some research on the good old Google, <laughs> and I knew I could, my records were in Nashville. A notarized letter, $150, that's all she thought? Too easy. It was. Request denied. 
A sealed adoption requires the birth mother's consent. Her birth mother died in 2014. The tenacity that got her across the country to Errol, New Hampshire. The determination she brings to every dog she tries to save fueled Ella's fight to get her own records. She hired a lawyer. They filed an appeal and she won. All I wanted, all I needed was a name. I just needed to run. my mother's name, Google her obituary, boom. That tells everybody's names, family, her sons, her daughters, or whatever. There's two brothers and a sister. I was like, oh my gosh. I can't even describe the feeling. I can't, I can, talking about it, I get, um, I don't even know what that is. I feel in here, but it's just, you know. Facebook to the rescue again. Was your mother by chance Coralie Durham Williams, she asked? I waited like two seconds and no response, so I went to the other brother. <laughs> and within three seconds after I hit sent, he wrote back and says, yes, that's her. I think I know who you are. We've been looking for you since 1998. <laughs> <laughs> Ella's newly found relatives flew to Boston, drove four hours to Errol to connect. The initial meeting had a surreal hush. The hugs were long, the eye contact intense. Funny thing about home though, as thrilled as she is to find her family, Ella can't imagine leaving Errol. And the work she does for dog rescue, well, that's a calling she'll never abandon.